universe is packed with monstrous things. Researchers have recently discovered giant clouds of gas that resemble something out of a horror movie. These mysterious objects are called Lyman Alpha Blobs. My personal favorite biggest objects in the universe are the Lyman Alpha Blobs. An unpredicted, unexpected phenomenon where you're catching a galaxy in the first phases of its formation and collapse. The Lyman Alpha Blob is very much like this expanding soap bubble. Except in the case of the soap bubble, it's the air which is making it fill up. The Lyman Alpha Blob is expanding because of heat. A lot of energy has been injected into this gas to make it heat up. And when you put all that energy into a gas, it inevitably tends to puff up and expand exactly like an expanding bubble. In the case of a Lyman Alpha Blob, it's being puffed up by heat and maybe also by the ultraviolet radiation from the newly formed stars. The largest known Lyman Alpha Blob is a colossal amoeba-shaped structure that resembles a giant green jellyfish. It's 200 million light years wide and is located in the constellation Aquarius. When we're looking at the Lyman Alpha Blob, we're seeing gas that's sort of spread amongst these very first stars and galaxies. It's kind of an amorphous shape of about 30 separate little blobs inside of it. It's very large and very massive. The whole structure is about 3,000 times the size of our own Milky Way galaxy. The Keck and Subaru telescopes in Hawaii contain special filters that are able to see this faraway blob, which spreads out along curvy tentacles. Scientists estimate that the largest Lyman Alpha blob was formed about 12 billion years ago almost two billion years after the Big Bang. The observational technique we use to see that gas, it refers to a very specific color of light, emission of light, that's called Lyman Alpha. So you hear a phrase Lyman Alpha blob because if you take an image of the sky through a filter that gives you only that Lyman Alpha light, that very special wavelength of light, you'll see a little blob on the sky. Lyman Alpha Blobs are perhaps precursors to the galaxy clusters we see today. Within these gigantic bubbles may exist cocoons that will one day spawn new galaxies. The Lyman Alpha Blobs are probably a fairly special short lived phase in the evolution to creating a galaxy. I would expect that most of them are going to collapse and form young galaxies in the next 100 million years or so of their lives. So it's a special phase just when a galaxy is beginning to pull itself together. The search of the universe for Lyman Alpha Blobs is just beginning. We'll undoubtedly find many more of them and even perhaps some larger ones in the future. Stay tuned. Lyman Alpha Blobs may hold the answers to the formation of individual galaxies, which are gravitationally bound systems containing stars, gas, dust, and dark matter. At least 100 billion single galaxies exist in the observable universe. They range in size from 10,000 to millions of light years across. Galaxies, these titanic collections of stars, I think of them as cities having been born in one myself. Not only a galaxy, but also an actual city, a native of New York where everyone is crowded together. Galaxies are sort of how matter has organized itself in the universe. In the competition for largest single galaxy in the universe, sizing up a winner is challenging. The problem in saying what's the largest galaxy is in deciding where they end. The galaxy does not have a sharp edge. It just gets thinner and thinner as you go further out. It's exactly analogous to saying where's the end of a very large metropolitan area. Where's the end of Los Angeles? 
you can go out 50 miles and you'll still find a fairly high density of suburbs. The suburbs of a big galaxy like the Milky Way extend out very, very far, more than 100,000 light years. And with a giant galaxy, those suburbs extend out hundreds of thousands of light years. Since scientists can't determine a clear winner, several galaxies share the title as biggest. They're called cluster diffuse, or CD galaxies. And they sit in the centers of rich clusters of galaxies. If you think about the cosmic web as being sort of like a three-dimensional spider web, well, then the spiders lurking in the middle of the web are these monstrous CD galaxies, as we call them. These galaxies can have masses that are, in some cases, maybe 10 times or 20 times the mass of our own Milky Way. These CD galaxies are the largest galaxies in the universe. For example, IC 1101 sits in the center of a galaxy cluster called Abel 2029, and it's six million light years across. Compare that to our own Milky Way, that's 100,000 light years across. It's a really big galaxy. It's 60 times the size of our Milky Way. CD galaxies are elliptically shaped, as opposed to a disk structure like our Milky Way. This is because they've achieved their size by bulking up on other galaxies through galaxy mergers. You may have heard the phrase galaxy cannibalism, where one galaxy eats another. That goes on all the time in clusters of galaxies. So sitting usually down at the very center of a massive cluster, you'll find one big galaxy. These CD galaxies have so much mass that they are the 800-pound gorilla wherever they are. You see little galaxies maybe orbiting around them, but basically it's eaten up everything nearby. The largest galaxies may be 6 to 20 million light years across. However, there are other objects even larger. They're called radio lobes. Stretching out from both sides of a galaxy, these immense structures are actually hurling jets of charged particles that emit radio waves. So we're here in this auto body shop where I'm going to use these two torches to simulate radio jets coming out of opposite sides of an accretion disk swirling around a supermassive black hole. So in the visible, you see a small blue flame coming off of the torch. But in the infrared, you can see that the heat from the torch extends much, much further out. Similarly, with the radio jets, what you see in the optical is actually quite different from what you see in radio waves. A typical lobe might be 160,000 light years as the lobe spreads out on both sides of the galaxy. That's about twice the size of the Milky Way galaxy's disk. Astronomers think radio lobes are powered by supermassive black holes located in quasars. These are the luminous centers of most active galaxies. The jets of radio energy that come from a giant black hole and make these enormous radio lobe structures are very closely related to quasars. In fact, in some cases, you can see a low-power quasar in the center of the galaxy, and then it's surrounded by these giant lobes to either side. They've been blasted out by very high-energy jets of electrons that are basically moving at almost the speed of light. And they are blasted out probably from the north and south poles of a spinning black hole. The radio lobes depend on matter going down the black hole. As matter goes down the black hole, some of it gets accelerated up into these lobes. So the size of the lobes has something to do with the history of how much matter the black hole was actually fed on. And so over time, they'll change size. Radio telescopes have surveyed the universe and determined the largest known radio lobe. The undeniable record holder is located in the galaxy named 3C236, which is in the constellation Leo Minor. Its jets span 40 million light years across. Scientists don't understand why some active galaxies form these jets and others don't. But one thing's certain, 
radio lobes will not last forever, perhaps for only a few million years. So just as this torch will eventually run out of gas and shut itself off, the jets from a radio galaxy will eventually die as well. When the black hole has consumed all of the material in its immediate vicinity, there will be nothing left of the accretion disk to get shot out along the magnetic field lines, and the jet will die. If black holes are the producers of these gigantic radio lobes, then what is the largest black hole in the universe? Scientists are currently placing bets on the winner.